It is the Morgana band. All right, so Morgana band, another smart band. Ooh, and there is the Graves. The Graves pick. The very confident Graves pick. Elite Rooster picking Kogma. I love Kogma. Love this pick. Love Chinese. Hopefully, as Chinese Dragon Kogma, it'll make me super happy. But we will see what Elite Rooster puts out. He was clearly the better AD last game, so I'm really excited to see how good his Kogma play is. He does have a lot of range, so he should be able to poke and kind of deal with uh, the really aggressive Graves. Uh, probably played by Cat Scan, maybe by Marone and Gans. I don't know. They switch it up a lot. Highwind's going to go Nocturne again. Nocturne, you know, really strong jungler now. Really, really fast jungle. Uh, ooh. No, he's going to go Pirate. So Pirate jungle it is. Going to pump fake the Nocturne. Going to switch it up. That new Pirate art. He just really wanted to see that new Pirate art. That's really what it is. Catscan's going to go Leona. We have seen this before. Uh, we have seen the Catscan Rotting Yams bot duo. Um, so that that is kind of exciting. <laughs> up on me again. Whatever you want to do. Go Triple AD. Go Sivir. I'll talk about you all day. Catscan. So Catscan loves Sivir. It's his favorite character. He actually has a full body pillow of Sivir. And he actually goes to sleep with it and cuddles with it every single night. It's a true story. Behind the scenes, just so you know. I like to give the inside scoop here at Razor Weapon. I don't like to. I don't like to tell you the facts, like what I see. I like to give you a little bit behind the person, behind the character. Jaybot gonna wait till the last second to pick his character. Jaybot, the initiator of the team, usually picks a uh, big beefy character to initiate with. Uh, because I've said that now, and people are kind of going against me here, we might see uh, maybe maybe a Sona. Nope, nope, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, the last second shot go switch. Really, j -Buck? All right, I like it, I like it. But Catscan, uh, uh, Marauding Gans on the AD, we had a scene as bot lane before. Um, they probably decided that last game uh, that was a weakness of their team. So now they've decided that they're going to go a, a really strong dual lane to try to counter that. Um, they have fallen prey to that before, like when they played Kadantra, who's a very, very strong AD carry. Kind of the same thing to them. OMG Bear is going to go LeBlanc. I think Le Oh, no. I'm getting trolled. There's no way he's going LeBlanc. I want... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, OMG Bear. Get out of here. Get out of here. What is that? Oh. Uh, these guys. These guys. See? This is why I need a delay. This is why I need a delay, because now they're just going to troll me with my five-second delay all day long. It's okay. It's okay. Much love. Much love. Yeah, I got gonna go Soraka again. Why not? It worked really, really well. Great sustain. So, what will Rubric pick? Who will be the new choice? Will it be LeBlanc again? Does he feel like going another LeBlanc? Does he feel like maybe going a Brand, having a little bit more AoE? Um, a Rise? I love Rise. I'm sorry, I'd pick Rise every game. I don't care what the other team is. Oh, it's gonna be LeBlanc. Alright, locks in that LeBlanc, all confident in that. And Zakara is going to go uh, Karma again. Hmm. Interested in exactly how this team is going to stack up in their lanes. Will we see. I mean, are we going to see a solo Graves, maybe? That seems weird. I don't like that. Solo Leona? Haven't seen that. Who will Aglos pick? Will he just go Nasus again? He was successful. He had so much fun. He has that right Nasus skin. He gets to show off and be all cool like. Be all like, look, I met a Riot employee or I went to PAX. I'm so cool. Maybe he won it as a prize from Razor Weapon during a streaming event, which we do do every now and then. And he's going to go Cho'Gath. He's like, I played against Cho'Gath last game. Maybe I'll play Cho'Gath. You know, maybe, maybe give you a few tips, a few pointers. Show you how it's done. And there you have it. There are the final teams. I've done being trolled. Now I can talk about them. And I have nothing to say. I kind of already said it all. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Rubric played LeBlanc last game. Uh, got that early advantage with LeBlanc. Outfarmed OMG Bear mid as Malzahar. They're going to have another run at it, obviously. We know how that turned out last time, but it wasn't enough of an advantage. And the problem with LeBlanc is... Later game you get, the less effective she is because she is a single target burst AP champion assassin. And really what I mean, really what I was suggesting earlier is you get a couple 
MR uh, MR items and you're you know you're golden you kind of cancel out that that early advantage and you just go straight into <laughs> you just go straight into uh, uh, the late game and have your advantage because now she's only a single target champion you can deal with her a lot easier so uh, I'm interested to see how this works out. Jaybok though, no, that's the wild card. Jaybok, how good is his uh, Shaco? Because Shaco is another one of those champions that if he gets that foothold early, running around ganking everybody, it's gonna be a big, big pain. So we might have to see some really good early warding and good CVs uh, from Ugagat and uh, to protect his team. Because otherwise, I mean, Shaco with this new jungle, so 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 mean. And I'm actually really hoping, uh, I really, really do like Jaybok, so I'm really, really hoping he's going to have a game and a half out here, just run around all crazy like Zicario. I'm, it's just, I'm still interested to see what they do with that lane, if they really do put Graves in a solo lane by himself, or if they if Catscan and Zicario split off and do their thing and do a bottom lane, but I just don't feel that's really, really strong, and all that's going to do is let uh, Elite Rooster just farm the heck out of Cho'Gath, and once they hit late game... He's going to be unstoppable, so we shall see what Team Teemo decides. So again, all, to all you new viewers, you can go to RazorWeapon.com. The site is not completely up yet. It's just a construction page, but it has links to all our Facebooks, Twitter, YouTube. You can see our past games, the past games of the Google in-house. You can see Intel LandFest games, everything that we've casted. And uh, you can like us, follow us. It really, really helps us out. Subscribe, see when all our videos are up. And you also will see a Game Breakers Land Center button uh, down there. Uh, that actually is a land center in Auburn, in Washington, that we are working with. And we are actually putting out a tournament this weekend, December 17th. It's going to have some of the best teams in Washington uh, in the Pacific Northwest just going at it and throwing down. We have the winner of Intel Lamfest is going to be there. A bunch of the UW Purple Caster Minions. Big shout out to them. They're a big, huge community at UW campus. About 300 people or more. They're, just, they're everywhere. Got teams going everywhere. They got some 2K uh, ELO players. So big shout out to them. Some of them actually played for Razor Weapon at Intel Lamfest. So big props. They have some great casters as well. And then you have... Uh, Team Dota 2, Juice, whatever you want to call them as they go by. Uh, <laughs> they're actually, the w they've uh, actually, a lot of their members have been on the teams that have won PAX the past two years. So if you like PAX Prime and their PAX tournament, these guys have won it twice. So they are really, really good. So we have a lot of really star-studded uh, teams, a lot of teams wanting, fighting over certain players to play for their teams. So we're going to have some stacked teams, some great games coming at you this weekend that will all be streamed live. Um... If the ones we do miss, we are going to record and then restream them and get them, make sure that everybody sees every single game. We'll have tons of interviews, give away tons of prizes, probably give some prizes away on the stream. So if you tune in this weekend, um, you might win some Riot NASA skins or a Pack Siver skin or t shirts from Razor Weapon and a lot of really, really cool stuff. So tune in this weekend, check that out. Uh, go to our website, like us, follow us. Give us a lot of support. We love to do this. We love to cast games. Although I am solo today, we do have more casters. Highwind, as you see, playing Cho'Gath, actually the Switch. So Highwind's actually going to be jungle. I missed all that. Anyways, uh, oblivious me. But uh, yeah, so uh, Highwind actually is usually a co-caster with me. We have another co-caster, TK Rain, and some UW Purple caster means that help us out from time to time that you can see. Uh on our other stream probably this weekend, but today uh, they were not able to show up or they are playing in this game, so that is why it is just me on the mic. Get this fixed up. Get this ready to go. Alright. So, okay, what were the switches? Well, I wasn't paying attention. Highwind's going to be jungling as Cho'Gath. I like that. Pirate's going to be top. I like that. Uh, looks like Catscan's going to be top solo as Leona that is giving it away by the teleport. So <laughs> that'll be an interesting matchup. I haven't seen a lot of Leona's top lately. So, And look, the camera didn't run around to the bottom right like it wants to every single, every single game when well, I'm not paying attention. So, two quick runouts by Team uh, Mundo, but uh, the rest of the team's kind of sitting in base, buying their items, figuring out what they want to buy. You can see the Pirate and uh, Malzahar are going to be going for that quick uh, Philostone start. 
pretty good start. Uh, Highwind's going to be going a dagger and pots. Welcome and to Summoner's Rift. Uh, interesting starts. Good, good support build start from uh, Soraka. Bolton's going to start here, heading towards the bottom jungle. Graves out there really early to guard that tri-bush and guard the invade against the red. Reds are really, really important now in the new jungle scheme. A lot for a lot of early ganks. So a lot of teams like to get that over blue now. Because you ha do have really, really great sustain. Depends on the champions, though. Really depends on the jungle champion. 30 seconds until minions spawn. 30 seconds until minions spawn. LeBlanc sitting out front. Now, I'm, I'm really interested to see how good this how uh, Rubric comes back from this. We have two boxes, so I haven't seen a lot of the new Shaco starts. Uh, it used to be you would put three boxes here, two boxes here, do golem. You would smite the big wraith, do golems, then do red. It looks like there's going to be two boxes at golems. He's going to stack red. Maybe he'll get the pull on red, do red first. I have no idea. Minions have spawned. Uh, Cho'Gath looks like Highwind's going to do the wolves first, get that early start, get that new buff so he's going to get even more health back, and then get a heavy pull onto blue and do blue really quickly. So there goes that. A lot of damage goes down onto him. They, they de-aggro. Shaco's going to pick up the, the health buff there. He's going to pick up uh, this Wraith Camper really, really quickly. It looks like he's going to solo red. So and then here's that heavy pull for Highwind, although not, not that heavy. And he's actually going to take a lot of damage from that golem, but he's going to have his smite up really soon. Aggroing away from it. Oh, there we go. Does have that uh, that awesome Soraka heal armor magic resist buff. So here we go. Here we meet again. OMG Bear versus Rubric. Round two. Rubric really, really great. Solid mechanically. He's a really solid uh, a laner. And he had the advantage last time, but uh, it wasn't enough to pull through for his team and carry his team into late game. Now what happened down here is uh, Elite Rooster just completely outplayed the other team. Team's AD carry. Took all the advantage, and it's not really. It's 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 part. Leet Rooster is actually a very competent, really good AD. <laughs> we got looks like we got a mix up here. Leona being really aggressive, getting tons of stuns down, which I do like. Although Pirate does have that built in that built in cleanse. Now, like I was talking about earlier, Leet Rooster. It's part Leet Rooster, but it's partly the fact that Soraka is just really good at healing, and Zakario is one of the newer players for. Uh, Team Mundo. Uh, normally, uh, Zakario, we would see him playing uh, support Karthus bottom lane, and we'd see him playing support uh, Viger bottom lane, but that was just simply because that was the characters that he knew how to play. And so they tried to make it work. And, you know, now he actually found a support champion. Now, not a very popular one, not a very easy one to play in Karma, but still, you know, whatever is fun for you, whatever you want to do. And so now they actually have a, the traditional support AD bottom. But Lee Rooster just, you know, he's just a really solid player. So I'm, I'm going to see if the, this Graves, how, how much better this Graves uh, Cho'Gath matchup works as opposed to last time when it was uh, Caitlyn versus Ash. And it was Catscan bottom playing the AD. Catscan no longer playing the AD. He's playing top as Leona. And really, really low on mana, but uh, so is uh, Gangplank on life. He's going to free farm a little bit there. And uh, so 15 to 7. So again, just mechanically, Rubik, the better laner, better last, better at last hitting, better at zoning. Malzahar, though, with a really, really easy mechanic to farm, but he looks like he's spending it on harass onto LeBlanc, which really isn't the right way to go. Really bold dive in there. Good reactions by OMG Bear. Doesn't actually comes out ahead on that exchange. And he, has, he still has a pot, and he still has that regrowth pendant. Now, it looks like j starting to sneak down. There it is. There's that really good ward by Mugaga. He has that forward ward, knew that the Shaco gank would probably come, and he spots it. So, I mean, that's a smart play. That's what you have to do, and he does a great job and uh, gets her done. Now, a pirate up top with uh, no... Now, here's the deal. So, j was just bottom, and we saw the smart ward play. Now, you have a pushing pirate with no mana... Really low health. Catscan's thinking about soloing him right now, and he has no wards up top. I mean, that's that's your target. If you're if if it's me, um, your Shaco, that's my target. I'm I'm uh, definitely gonna go for Agalos. And instead, what's gonna happen is Chogas is gonna try to come and pick up Leona. Leona gets popped up. She's gonna do a quick flash away. 
has that armor buff. Easily gonna escape out of that. But the flat but that what that does mean is the flash is down, which means the high one may try to camp this and might come up top. No, he's gonna go farm. But I know a good idea is once you pop that flash, is just actually sit in this bush and just wait. Just wait and see if they push back out. If they do, then you can come back in. Now this time they don't have a uh, flash, and you can uh, give it another uh, give it another try. Jayback trying to be very very patient down here, but the other team is pushed against their turret. Not very very smart to sit down here and waste time at this point. The jungle, you have to be really decisive about your ganks uh, and about farming because otherwise you will far fall behind in this new jungle. Highwind doing a little bit of an invade here. Early ward is probably going to wait till he sees that blue come up. When he sees that blue come in, he's going to try to collapse on as fast as possible. Wonk a little low here. Taking a bit of a harass. But Mounds are pretty low. Oh, the dive in. This might be this might be really good if Highwind can land his rupture. No, rupture is way off. And uh, Rubik's easily going to escape out of this. Highwind still wants to pursue. Now they're going to be caught by that ward there. Rubik trying to juke up, but they should they should have saw that. They should have saw that. Malzahar knows that Rubik is there. Now, will he move in? Will he see the, Will he know that the blue pill is coming? Trying to be really, really patient. And no. Wow. Uh, Rubik's going to get out of that. Uh, Could have been really, really dangerous. They should have known that she was there because of because of the ward right here but apparently uh apparently they didn't want to commit they didn't want to take the risk so let's see how graves is doing in here graves is sitting at 32 while chogath is sitting at 40 or uh, kogma is sitting at 41 not as bad as what as last game and there's no wards for bottom uh zakario might have a ward he might place it right into a chogath and that is what's going to happen a lot of damage going on there's the exhaust the pop-up and zakario is going to get picked off very, very good patience and waiting and just unfortunate timing for Zakario. you got to get those earlier wards out there and uh, place them and so that so that kind of stuff doesn't happen. Especially with the new jungle, especially with all the roaming ganks that happen now. Um, a lot more prevalent. you got to gotta get wards up early. It's very, very important. And a lot of supports you can actually start uh, and get some extra gold. Great actual juke there by Graves. Very patient. Didn't have a dash. Just stopped there, knew the rupture was coming, read it from Highwind, and dodged up. Great play by Martin Gans. Martin Gans, one of the better players on Team Mundo. Just kind of showing just a little bit of patience there. Just a really smart play. And I would like to comment, though, that Kogma does, uh, Elite Rooster does not have a Kogma skin, which actually is pretty depressing because I feel like Kogma is one of those heroes that once you play him, it's like you fall in love with him, and you should have at least. Uh, a skin for him. I mean, he has so many good ones. He has a butterfly skin. He has the the best one, which is the the <laughs> the the Chinese dragon legendary skin, which I have, which I love, where he shoots out fireworks instead of his normal projectiles. Love that one. And also, if you are festive and you uh, got the limited edition one, you can actually get the reindeer Kogma, which is pretty cool as well. Pirate again, no mana. You know, the new skin is pretty cool. He fits a little bit better into the game. He doesn't have that weird hair protruding from his chest pants area or whatever in the opening splash screen. But yeah, really low on mana. Uh, you can see all the Philo stones across the board uh, for Team uh, Teemo, which is really smart item. Uh, you basically get a return on it right away. Good ward of dragon for, uh, by Zakario. So at least, or no, that was actually by Jaybok. So smart ward by him. So they have vision on dragon. Highwind likes to call early dragons. Any opportunity he sees, he's going to do it right away. I'm ex probably expecting a pink ward at some point next time, maybe when Highwind goes back, and they might decide to collapse on that. Pink ward's very, very good early game. Pink ward here, really eat. Re you want to put, you want to buy pink wards, spend the extra money, get the pink ward, get the ward control. Pink ward right here, very commonplace. Pink ward of dragon is a no-brainer. Pink ward up top here because these wards always go down as well. If you kill this ward up top, then you have you ha you have them uh, <laughs> you have them where you want them uh, because without any vision now you can sneak up like this even with vision sometimes obviously. <laughs> And there's the pop-up, there's the pirate alt, there's the slow from red. No, oh, there's the flash, but it's not going to be enough. It's going to be easy pirate Q or a feast. Yep, and Leona definitely goes down. So had that war there, it doesn't matter. Jaybok maybe thinking about doing something, catching someone, but it's not It's not going to matter. Maybe he places a lot of, a lot of jack-in-the-box traps and they don't realize and walk into it. Or maybe he can bait them into it if uh, they're not thinking clearly. So here comes Jay back around. He's going to draw their attention probably. 
Jumps on a high one, not reacting in time. There's the ignite. There's the slow. The eat to get out of it. Double doppelgangers, but it's not. That's not going to be enough. Oh, will we get the dash to see? Will we get the see for the kill? He's not going to be that greedy. He's not going to be that greedy. May might have been able to kite his clone in quicker if he was controlling that uh, manually, but did not. Looks like we had a little bit of bouncing around, a little fight over dragon. There's that pink ward that I was calling earlier from uh, Team Mundo. Sorry, from Team Timo. And that's what you need to do, and you get war control. So now there's no vision for the for uh, Team Mundo on that dragon. Uh, Cho'Gath could be collapsing down. Uh, instead of going top, Pirate could be collapsing down. They could all collapse on this, and uh, Team Mundo would be none the wiser. J-Box sneaking through the enemy jungle. Not going to find a red anywhere. He might find a Cho'Gath, but he's not going to be able to kill a Cho'Gath. Might be able to annoy him, that's for sure. No Shiv. Now he's going to come. He deceives in. I don't know if he's going to be able to get much out of this. Maybe steal something. You know, start annoying him. Get the fear off. I have a feeling Hyman's going to eat him <laughs> in a second. There's the pop-up. Doesn't actually have eat up, so he's going to back off. j going in there. Kind of wasting a little bit of time there. Wasn't really going to be able to be very effective against Cho'Gath. And bottom, let's see what the tail is. Graves is sitting at... 65 creep stats, and we have uh, good old uh, Kogma at 75. So, and, you know, not as far behind as before because we were almost looking at a double uh, creep stat deficit last time, bottom lane. So that lane is being kept a lot more in check than it was previously. And uh, we also have to see that middle, we have a 79 creep score to Malzahar's 41. So that, again, you know, Rubric, he's, he's winning that creep score. But the problem is, is that it doesn't necessarily always matter because these games are probably going to go late. Um, I don't see the I don't see Team Mundo being too decisive, and what that leads into is less effectiveness for uh, LeBlanc. So we will have to see how this goes. She needs to start getting on the board, getting a lot of kills right now. She's 000 unless she's heading bottom and she's going to try to sniff out a kill here. Although they easily see Jbok there with that good ward placement. Ooh, a lot of damage going on. He's going to go in on this Kog'Maw. That's not a good idea. Papa's all run away, but that's too obvious. He gets exhausted. There should be another hit. And oh, that hit was so close. Huge damage going on to Kogma. Kogma going to go down here. No, he's going to flash out. And then the ult is going to save. It's going to save him. Oh my gosh, Kogma barely escaping. LeBlanc gets that shackle off, turns on Highwind. Highwind's going to flash out, realizing that he's in a lot of trouble now. Everybody's running for their lives really, really low. And there's huge burst damage on it. And there's the dash. It's going to be really, really close. Gets him with that shackle. Shackles. Will we see? Oh, the Q's the minion. Oh, she used her spell on the minion. Could have maybe picked up Soraka there, but just way, way, way too late on that. Malzahar thinking about coming down, but his ult is down. Probably not going to be able to catch either of these players. Might actually end up in a lot of trouble for doing so. Now what I would like to see is I'd actually like to see a dragon right now. You have most of their team down and back at their base. If you collapse fast enough, which it looks like they're going to do right now, they should be able to pick up a dragon. So Team Mundo is going to collapse. Last time they did get the first dragon as well. So will we see it here? Not sure Rubric pulling dragon, not necessarily the best. But, you know, hey, whatever gets the job done. And uh, Team Team is not actually going to be able to collapse on this in time. Meanwhile, Cat Scan, I mean, let's have this 56 to uh, Pirate 75. So he is getting out farmed. I don't know if this is necessarily the best experiment for a top solo. I don't, I don't know if I really like Leon as a top solo. I think there's a lot scarier characters you could play up top. Uh, I think a Nasus again would have been, would have been a better pick up top. It's harder to deal with uh, as you get later in the game, and he has great sustain. Leon a, a stun bot, but not really a scary damage output champion, especially if you're just losing the top in farm. Rubric probably should back off here. I mean, Malzahar's ult isn't back up yet, but, I mean, that's still a really scary proposition. <laughs> Hanging around here, and his, his passive is going to be popped by minions. So, yeah, I definitely need to back off now. Rubric is going to do the smart thing and back off. And those field stones paying for themselves right away once you build them. Kogma, he, huge range. Now, that range was nerfed a bit, or the, the cooldown on the ability was nerfed a bit, which made me really sad because, obviously, I'm a huge Kogma fan. <clears throat> but still a very effective poke champion. Has a lot of range. Zakario out of position there. If they had a ward or a CV there, they probably could have easily picked him off. Just done an easy slow, easy slow combo. 
Graves could have tried to move in, maybe saved, but probably not. Zakaria probably would have fell before either character would have been any sort of real damage. And uh, we've got going to do a really smart ward in here again. There is a slow on the Kogma. Kogma's going to back off. Soraka's going to be uh, zoned out a little bit there, but they're not going to chase too far. And, I mean, for for how much uh, Coolens went on to Kogma, he's not, he's not too worse for wear. Although he is out of position there. I don't... <laughs> he's getting a little too aggressive. Soraka going why all the way around. You didn't have to do that. And it looks like Chogas, actually, there's going to be a dive. Oh! Wow. It looks like there's going to be a gank top and uh, Pirate taking some turret hits, almost going down. Probably a lot of a lot of defensive stuns from uh, Leona. And there's going to be a late response here from Jaybok and Rubric. And, you know, Leona, I just, you know, I, I don't really like Leona top. I I don't, I don't really get it. Don't really get it at this point in the game. But you know, hey, you know, maybe she'll prove me wrong in some of those later team fights. Maybe she'll start to catch back up and farm. And uh, I love being proved wrong. I love seeing new stuff. I love the meta game getting switched up. <laughs> Kogma really just taunting the other team, saying, "Please, overextend just a little bit for me. Come in here, do it. I dare you." High one walking around, being Chogath, being a boss. I mean, Chogath really. I do like him as a jungler. His feast, he has his feast, which is really, 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 really good. He has a lot of stuns and team silences. He's just great for a team in general as a tanky character. As a jungler, you know, he's not too bad. And he can feast and, and mow through it really, really quickly. He's so now Pirate at 100 creep stats, and Leona is at 64. So he almost has two, two and a half kill advantage on Leona, plus the fact Leona has died twice. And he has a kill and assist, so Pirate's way ahead top. So top has been won. I mean, we can call top right now as a landing advantage for... Ooh, that rupture way, way, way too close. I mean, you have to... Okay, so in those situations where a character's running at you, um, you can get juked out if they're bad, but the good players or the natural response to seeing a Cho'Gath in front of you is to run away, so that rupture should have been placed uh, in anticipation for Zakario to try to back off. And, you know, it kind of was, like, really quickly thrown up, like, Zagari was going to come in, which is not the case with the Karma. I would expect that not. Hyo being really patient here, if he knows, if, he, if they throw down the CV or he thinks that Zakario is there, he could throw down a, a rupture ahead of time. And there's a lot of slows going on in Graves. There's the exhaust. He should be able to land a rupture. Hyo would land that rupture. Ren land that rupture for me. He's not going to land the rupture. He's going to try to flash feast and be flashy and be like me. But he's not going to be able to pull out Rubric, picking off a kill mid. It's a pretty standard play from... Uh, a really strong LeBlanc. Whew. Lee Rooster taking the wrong path there, taking a turret shot. It doesn't really matter. Zakari getting way far in. And there again, there's that way too close rupture. Just getting a little... I mean, I don't know if he has hotkeys or what exactly is going on, but popping a little bit too early, a little bit close. Got to expect that player's going to try to back off away from you. And LeBlanc is coming down now. Maybe thinking about bursting down some. There's not a lot of really good targets. Um, yeah, they're going to see her go there, pop her up. Kind of a waste of time right now. Good pink ward again at Dragon by Team Teemo. Keep, keeping that ward control. So top lane has been won for uh, Team Teemo. Middle lane definitely, again, is going to have to go to uh, Rubric. It's going to have to go to Team Mundo. And bottom lane, really, uh, Kog'Maw at 103. We got uh, 109 for Graves. So Graves ahead there. And... And Graves has a kill, Kogma only has an assist, so right down there, you know, AD battle, slight advantage, slight, very slight advantage for uh, Graves. Jungle advantage, I have to say, so far ganking success-wise, Highwind definitely should probably have the advantage there. I mean, Jaybok really has had uh, one helpful assist gank, uh, and other, other than that, he's he's behind his farm of the jungle. So I'd have to, I'd have to give it to Highwind, but uh, overall, if you look at the team goal, I mean, that's how close it is. I mean... You have uh, a really close uh, draw lane bottom, a slight advantage to Team uh, Teemo, and then you have one lane for Team Teemo, uh, and one lane for Team Mundo, and then the jungles are pretty close. So, I mean, you only have a 1k difference about between the two teams at about 20 minutes in. So this this should be a good game. I'm interested to see how it, pays, how it, uh, how it ends up. However, the way I'm suspecting it is going to play out as I don't like... Uh, the single target nature of a lot of the characters for uh, Team Mundo, which is uh, the blue team. 
uh, with that uh, Shaco and the LeBlanc. LeBlanc is going to pick up another Malzahar. Gets stunned right on the turret, but they know who it is. There's that team heal, that new strong team heal. People, I mean, that used to be a spell that people would laugh at, but it is a very strong spell. You know, and if Malzahar would have been quick enough to react, and there's another gank top. Picking up j -Bock, playing around too much. He's going to get picked up for his trouble now. Rubrik coming up. Rubrik has no health. He could be easily eaten by Highwind right now. So I don't, he's going to blue pill in his face. If there was a war there. Oh, I wish there was a war there. I mean, Highwind popped his had popped his feast to get that kill earlier. But oh, how I wish. How I wish. But yeah, too much single target right now is what I'm seeing from Team Mundo. So I don't know if I think that's the best. Highwind's pinging uh, Dragon right now, I believe. Which means that they're probably going to gear up for it very, very soon. And that is something that I do expect from Team Team and Team uh, and from Highwind if he's uh, talking to him on voice chat. Now, Highwind uh, uh, normally on Team Razor Weapon in the Google tournament, but he is an alternate for Team Teemo because we didn't have enough players for the tournament when we first had people sign up. So he is uh, normally a caster with me, but he is playing uh, normally on Razor Weapon, but he is going to play Checking Blue, even though he doesn't have vision of it. He knows it's up. And there's the pink ward uh, from Team Mundo. Picking up the pink ward from... Oh! Soraka caught way out of position. And she's going to go down easy. Easy, easy, easy. So now no heals. But that's not as big of a deal. I think uh, at this point, uh, Team uh, Team Teemo can actually be pretty confident in a fight at Dragon if they want to do it. Um, if Pirates... Pirates Teleport, which is up, is up. And a lot, of, a lot of pushing around here. LeBlanc way deep there. There's that dash. And that rupture that's way too close. Like, she's going to melee, melee hit you. Graves is going to pick up a bottom turret. So good distraction. Good shackle by LeBlanc. LeBlanc's just going to back out here. Oh, but she doesn't get caught in that pool. In that all Great job. By my, oh, just barely. I mean, oh, 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 oh. If Kogma could have auto-attacked there quicker, Highwind hadn't blown his cooldowns earlier. That I mean, that should have been that should have been a dead LeBlanc. There's no reason that shouldn't have been a dead LeBlanc. That is sad. And there's the pop-up, so Joe's going to land that rupture. He's going to get that slow on there, but it's not going to be enough. Karma's going to help him escape. Should help him escape. Maybe he won't. There's Oh, turns around just in time. Good flash. Great, great flash. Highwind's Feast was up, was about to do it, but that flash just flashed right out of his range right at the moment where he could have feasted. Probably should have tried it a little bit earlier. But it's all good. Now, now Highwind's thinking about the flash over the wall feast for uh, Jaybok. And here it comes. <laughs> oh, huge burst damage. Now is it going to be the flash wall over the wall to escape? No, it's not. He has nowhere to run. Fail flash by Highwind. No. Highwind, fail flash. And he's going to be bursted down by Karma, of all people. Karma, the slayer of Cho'Gath, doing her little strut walk with her, uh, with her fans. So proud of herself. So smug. And now they're pinging for... for uh, a dragon, the figure, hey, we killed Highwind, and you know, this is a good point. If you kill the enemy's jungler, the enemy's jungler has smite. That is their chance to steal. And, especially with Cho'Gath, you get rid of Feast. Feast is another way to steal. So, by killing the enemy's jungler, you, you have an even bigger advantage of going for a buff as opposed to just killing, an, uh, like, their AD care. I mean, some, I mean, or, like, their support or something. It's not just going to be a 5v4. It's going to be a 5v4 now, but you happen to kill. Woohoo! LeBlanc being dirty now, running around, sees the weak target, is going to try to pick off, but Kogma easily going to run her down. Kogma has huge, huge, huge range and huge damage potential. And Kogma looks like he's going, yeah, he has his BF sword. I don't know if he's going to go for Phantom Dancer first or the B or uh, something like an Infinity Edge, but Infinity Edge, BF sword, and uh, or Infinity Edge. Oh, Graves turning on the Kogma really fast, has the exhaust advantage. Highwind's going to come up, try to save Lee Rooster. Uh, Graves is going to back off right now. Malzahar easily pushing down this turret against uh, Karma. But great, you know, Car I think uh, Kogma was a little bit overconfident there after the block kill. And, you know, didn't realize that Graves is a bad mamma jamma. Graves actually 2-0-0, so he's having a really solid game now. 153 creep stats versus Kogma's 123. So Marani Gan's actually doing a better AD job outplaying Lee Rooster right now. But however, I do feel that Kogma is the better late game hero for a team fight scenario or just in general. Highland's going to go see the dragon is gone, be really disappointed, back out and go, we need more wards, brah. And they do need war wards because there are no wards on the map for either team anymore, I don't think. 
which is bad. Highwind's pinging it. I think Zuccaro's going to come in here, or Mugagot's going to come in here, place the ward. Yep. I'll place that forward ward. This is a good place for a ward. Uh, very forward later in the game. I can see another ward at blue, maybe. Pirate's so, so, so tanky. Hi Pirate going that war box Atmas, and, you know, l l look at this. I mean, for all the burst that LeBlanc has, it doesn't matter. He doesn't care. Pirate doesn't care. He didn't care about any of that. <laughs> and, and that is the power of a really farmed gangplank with Warmog's at and, and once he gets at months, he'll have even more crit. He'll be even more annoying. And Cho'Gath's just running in there, but he's going to eat a lot of burst damage. The rest of the team's going to have to back out. They're too much burst damage. Leona throwing down her ult. Hyman's going down. He's eternally never going to have enough stacks. And there's Leona. Popped all her burst. He's going to flash over. Good flash by Catscan. Getting out of there, but there's the alt pool. Karma's dead. There's no way Karma's getting out of this. There's the dot. There's the pirate shot. Crits, but... Oh, hoo -hoo, Rubric dashed away. He's really going to have to run for his life. He's not going to be able to run that pirate. There's going to be a Q really, really soon. Sitting on the turret, trying to get as much damage in as they can. Trying to get someone down, but... I mean, pirate's too tanky. He can tank that turret for days if he wants. Leona has some stuns, but really doesn't have a huge damage output. Meemaw Graves pushing bottom. Um, Ronnie Gans trying to get something done by himself. Self, but uh, I think Kog'Maw can easily push this away. And Ronnie Gans can get a bust out of there. He has no mana. So right now, ward-wise, we do have uh, a forward ward from Team Teemo. Bottom right here. And then Team Uno has the more important ward, which is that Baron right here. Twenty-seven. We're almost at 27 minutes in again. Uh, Baron can be done fast, depending on your team comp. Uh, depending on the situation, uh, I would say if they can gather up their team, uh, Team Teemo can actually do Baron really, really, really quickly. Uh, team Mundo, um, if if we get like a, if Jbok can farm up a uh, Madger's Razor, they can maybe do it really, really quickly, but otherwise I don't really have that feeling. Jbok thinking about going on Soraka there, but that's probably not a good idea. Probably a good idea for him to stay back here. Maybe ward up and trap a little bit. And uh, Pirate actually in a little bit of trouble now. He is really, really tanky, but going against both those champions, both those champions can put out enough DPS. He's going to try to teleport away, but it's not going to be in time. Now, it was a smart move because neither team really had a stun at that moment. However, uh, Jack and Box Fear would, would knock him out of that. But it was, it was a really good try. That is kind of the uh, Kogma picking up a turret bot, and it is getting pinged, and now he is going to be collapsed on. But uh, that is one of the Dota 2 strategies, uh, or Dota strategies, if you will, is to use uh, Town Scrolls Town Portal to teleport back to base. You can do this kind of the same thing in League of Legends. The teleport is faster than a blue pill, so you can actually teleport really, really quickly to try to get out of danger as long as they don't have a stun. Kogma easily going to get picked off. Huge burst damage from out of those two characters, the, the main DPS and the main uh, AP carry for... Uh, uh, team Mundo right here. And so uh, this game is going to shape up to be a lot more even game than it was last game because last game the 80 carry advantage was way out of whack. The gold advantage was way out of whack. And uh, Team Team only has a, I mean, the kills are even, uh, but the buff control is a little bit better for uh, Team uh, Team Teemo, which is the purple team. And uh, so they actually have a 3k advantage right now, but that's not enough to throw it out of whack. So uh, a couple turrets, maybe a buff, maybe a, especially a Baron. And this game is completely in the other favor. So, really, really good game so far. Better than last game. Last game kind of fell, snowballed way out of control. And uh, basically was uh, just a matter of waiting for the other team to uh, surrender, or they didn't. And so it, just made, it was a matter of waiting for Team Teemo to push in. Yeah. So, to, to, so to tell you, this is a best of three. Team Teemo is up one game so far in this best of three. And this is game two. And we're almost 30 minutes in. LeBlanc has her uh, her items. Uh, she has her rings, her sorcerer's shoes, and her rabbit on his death cap. So she has all her burst potential on tap. Now, the other team, I did call for a lot more maybe magic resist from the other team. And I don't really see it again this time. Pirate opposing, uh, choosing this time just to go health. There's that smart pink ward at Baron. So they should, have Baron they should have ward control as long as they check this bush, which you have to go to the bush to see that green ward. Uh, Dragon Dragon is up, and there is uh, Dragon Ward control for Team Mundo, but it looks like they're not going to take advantage of it. Baron is really important at this stage. Highwind, as soon as Highwind, uh, right here, as Cho'Gath, he is probably calling their strats right now. As soon as he sees that there is a chance for them to take Baron, the entire team's going to collapse on Baron. So they have to be 
team would have to be really, really vigilant and not give up that Baron again because that was the re a really big turning point in the game. I mean, they kind of were, uh, they kind of were drowning a little bit, but the Baron was basically the the double handed pushed under the water and held down and uh, them gasping for air. Morning Gans is going to say, "Hey, let's do Dragon." They're going to collapse in, but a really, really good coordinated move down here uh, by team, and they're going to focus LeBlanc. LeBlanc uses her team heal, trying to get away. She's not going to get away. She's going to get feasted. The rest of the team's going to turn on Jaybox. Jaybox going to go down. Leona throwing down her ult. Leona's going to go. At, the rest of the team's going to go down. Leona's going to go down here shortly. Cogma with the flash in to keep that range to put that last shot onto Leona, pick her up. And now we're almost looking at a situation. Flash by Karma. Karma really needs to use that uh, speed boost to try to get away from this. And oh, she's not going to get away. And there is the team ace by Team Teemo, and that is the better team fight potential. Uh, that I was fearing all along. You have too many single target champions. LeBlanc got picked off right away. You can't ever have that happen. And with all the sustained heals from uh, from Soraka, who doesn't even have to be in that fight, you're looking at a pretty good. You're looking at a way better team fight potential, especially with Pirates all and uh, <coughs> Kogma's just range and damage output, especially the later this game gets. So I mean, I really feel like right there now. Now you're almost looking at 6k advantage, and that's starting to get out of hand. Now, usually what you look for is you usually look for about 7k advantage. When it hits about that 7k mark in team goal difference, that's when you start noticing the difference. You have to play a lot more defensive. You have to play a lot smarter. So I'm interested to see how they react this time. If Team Mundo just tries to go, tries to go about it as normal, which they, uh, they're going to start, uh, they're starting to enter the point where they can't do that. They need to be really smart about their engagements or how they engage, uh, what they do from here on out. J-Box sitting here. Soraka, very smart, you know, Soraka right here, very smart oracles. This is what you need to do when you have an advantage. Get your support to have an oracles. I even like oracles earlier to have a better ward advantage. This game, not as heavy as warding as we're used to on Razor Weapon or in high level games. Uh, but still, or, uh, oracles sometimes early, even though it is a little bit of a risk, because if you lose your oracle, it is 400 gold, which does suck. But <laughs> but uh, besides that, it does give you ward control. And uh, if uh, they just basically need to run around Soraka, give her a little bodyguard force, she can actually just clear all the wards and gain uh, map map control and map advantage. And now, actually, all the Baron control is pretty much uh, in favor of Team Mundo. However, I don't think that pink ward is close enough to see this ward right here. We can check. No, it is not, definitely not close enough to see that pink ward. So they don't. So they aren't going to be able to clear that out unless they get their own oracles, which I would probably nominate to be put on Leona. Because she is the tankiest character, so she is the safest character to put Oracle on at this point in the game. Highwind just running in. He knows he's super tanky. He knows he want he wants them to blow all their cooldowns on on him. If Highwind dies, it's a success because the rest of the team is going to clean up. Oh LeBlanc, poor LeBlanc. You know she go went in there trying to be aggressive, and you know I think Rubik, his other the other AP champions that he had that he normally plays that get that got banned this game. Uh, are better team fight champions, and LeBlanc is not a, a really good team fight champion. He's she's a pub stomp champion. Oh, that Kogma acid acid barrage was so 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 close to picking up Jaybok right there. Just barely missed him. But to see just barely getting him out of range, very 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 close. That would have been an awesome pickup for a kill. And they're gonna push down this mid. They have way better poke. They have way better tanky champions. And you know you really can't lose that that, that top lane. Actually decides a lot of games. Um, Mid, people think mid lane, it's the sexy lane, and, you know, solo mid and all that junk. But, I mean, top lane, really, if you can dominate top lane, your farm, and get that really good farm, a lot of those champions are so tanky and hard to deal with that they become a, a big deciding factor in the game. And Pirate kind of is a deciding factor here. He should be tanking the turret if he wants to. Kog'Maw should just be poking this down. And you can look at the poke right now. I mean, Karma's almost dead. Uh, you have uh, Graves at half health. And you have a lot of characters that are just too squishy. They're too squishy at this point in the game to deal with the tanky and just strong AoE DPS. I mean, any of these characters can be torn down like blink of an eye if they want to. And uh, the, the Team Teemo's team is just way more tanky. And they're just going to keep poking at this turret. Just, just give enough space, take enough damage and uh, spells, and just have Kog'Ma either poke their team or he's, or, or he's just going to simply poke their turret. And they get to choose one or the other. Gray's popping his ult right there. And Soraka just needs to sit on to Kog'Maw and just heal Kog'Maw. That's all she has to do. Just be a heal bot for Kog'Maw. 
over and over and over again. They can just push this over, over and over and over. And maybe they're going to think about Baron now. They've weakened him enough. Maybe and they, maybe they might have noticed Jibok went back, and they might think about doing a Baron. They're going to split off right here, and sure enough, yeah. There it is. The pink ward is down and gone. Highwind's going to sit here and run interference. They know this is probably going to come. Great acid barrage in time. And LeBlanc's going to get eaten. If he oh, he ate the wrong one. Highwind ate the wrong one. He ate the fake one. He's going to be really mad now. He's probably going to... Oh, he gets he stomps the ground in anger. Gets the wrong one, but he did push him back. So now if they want to do a Baron, they can try to go for it again. Karma doing a slowdown. They might go back to poking the turret. We might see that again. Highwind tanking turret shots. He loves it. That's one of his favorite pastimes. There he does get the pop-up. Does get the stun, but the heal from Karma saving Leona. Especially with that buff, defensive buffs as well. And now, poke the turret. Poke the turret. So, pro tip, when you are trying to poke turrets, make sure you focus the turret. <laughs> Don't just focus champions. Because they actually could have this turret a lot lower by now if uh, they were more focused on putting damage on the turret the ranged characters were. LeBlanc getting really aggressive, but you know, LeBlanc, you're not going to do a lot of damage to a uh, pirate. Back off that target. You got, I mean, at this point, you got to try, you want to stick to Kogma, maybe Malzahar. I mean, silencing Malzahar during its ult is probably a better, or silencing Malzahar during a team fight is probably better than a lot of other options, but just so much tanky DPS, and a lot better just AoE damage for team fights. There's a slow into LeBlanc, LeBlanc has a dash away, she should be fine. They turn around, th and look, threw damage on the, to the pirate, pirate doesn't care. Pirate does not care about you, LeBlanc. <laughs> just don't focus him. Warmog Atma is better than you. You should have went Warmog Atma as LeBlanc. That's the truth. It's the truth. Real talk. Real talk. Uh, so, uh, Team uh, Team Timo has the better warding right here. Pirate not going to apparently uh, pop that Jack in the Box. Looks like Team Mundo is going to come down here, get red. Uh, Highwind is calling this game, so I would I expect them to be aggressive very soon here to try to get a Baron or something. Uh, Soraka should be roaming with that Oracle, trying to pick up wards. As she goes along, looks like people are going to go back and buy. Everybody loves their shiny new items. You see Highwind is very, very... Uh, he has that force of nature. He is very magic resist heavy, especially with that Wit's Hand, so LeBlanc can't do any damage to him at all either. So there's, they've, I mean, LeBlanc's really very ineffective at this point in the game. She can do, she can do one of two things really. I mean, she's either gonna go after Kogma, which is great because it takes away that that AD DPS, or ooh, will she get caught here? Will Highwood be quick enough? She can either tear, she can either try to tear down Kogma, or she can try to go for uh, Mugaga and get him to pop his heals on himself or or quicker. The problem is, though, is if you are playing smart casted and you are a good Soraka, when you see LeBlanc go in, you will silence her, and then she will lose all her burst potential. She will not be able to go back. To, she will not be able to dash out at that point, and everybody on your team can just eat her. And here, here, here you go. The Baron starts. I was going to call it. He sees that they have advantage. Uh, team Mundo is going to see this. They're going to go in now, and they're going to try to stop this, but I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Let's see what goes down here. Good pirate ult. Catching the lead in, putting lots of damage, and there's, there's, there, there you go. There's the damage on the Magaga. That, that's the smart move. Now Baron is going to go to the other team. Now they are starting to focus down Kogma, which I do like. They have to keep the damage on there. There's the slow, and you know, I, I really feel bad because you know Rubik is doing the right thing, but the rest of his team just isn't tanky enough, and they're all really, really low, and they have to back out now. And you know, the 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 gold advantage now is, I mean, there you go. There's that 7K mark. 7k mark has been reached. It's official. Got some minions pushing bottom. And that turret's not close. Hywin really, really wants a kill here. Leona going to go on there, put down all her stuns. Ooh, and ha, cat scan. Very smart play. He's going to pick up Hywin there. Hywin being way too aggressive with that Cho'Gath. I think he felt like it didn't matter, and he felt like he was tanky enough. Uh, maybe he felt like maybe he had the rest of his team with him. He tends to do that. It's his one maybe weakness is uh, thinking that everybody's on the same page he is uh, without communicating it. But uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. They have the advantage they want to have. They have the 8k advantage. They're going to push down this other mid turret, probably. Unless, wow, Kogma is getting way too aggressive. Good pickup by Marauding Gans. He's going to die for it, but still, you know, good pickup. He gets the gold, the gold bonus from killing Kogma, who uh, had a pretty good 4-0 uh, uh, run right there. 
So, I mean, not bad. Not bad trade. Although, I think they're going to pick up this uh, actually probably similar for us upgrade. So, not the best ever. Ooh, interesting. What's end from, uh, what's, what's end from Comet? From, uh, from Kogma. I like this. Little bit of, little bit of magic resist. Little, little gamesmanship there for LeBlanc. I like to see any magic resist. And there we have, uh, Abyssal Scepter from, uh, Malzahar. I like that build, too. Soraka. <laughs> Soraka's just, you know, she's like, I'm gonna, if I get focused, uh, I get focused. I don't care. <clears throat> so, good pickup of the mid turret. Looks like they're gonna push another turret. Which they can probably do. They don't know that the other team is down here. They haven't CV'd it yet. Team Tumo still with that Baron buff though, so it is dangerous to do any fights out here. So they're gonna pick up another turret. Picking up two turrets now. Highwind's still sitting at base. Maybe he's trying to pretend that he AFK'd. Uh, that and that's why he died last time. I do not know what is going on there. Uh, it is weird that Highwind's out and uh, Rubric just wasting time there. Letting him poke down that turret. The turret is almost at half health. About three quarters health. And they're going to back out here really, really quickly. I do not know what Highwind is doing. Highwind is at 780, 799 gold. I don't know what he's going for or why he would be sitting there. So maybe something has happened with his Pure Maze AFK. I do not know. But either way, uh, not necessarily the best scenario for uh, Team Teemo if they want to try to win this game. There's the acid barrage, the hits. Now, normal rules in a tournament is that if it's the first few minutes and a disconnect happens, then that's that's you know, it's tough. It's tough going. But uh, if you disconnected at this point in the game, it wouldn't matter. You'd play the game out. Um, and high it'd be Highwind's job to figure out whatever he has to do and get back in the game. I do not know what he's doing. So I uh, might be. It, it looks like they don't even need him though, because their uh, team 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 is pushing really really hard top. They do have a lot of poke here. I don't know what that acid barrage was for, but you know whatever, teach their own. Kawasaki <laughs> stick in there, just put as much damage onto that turret as he can. Just trust that Soraka is going to heal him and back out once he sees Leona, because Leona has all the stun potential. He burst down Leona. Leona got that Oracle. So that's the smart move to go. Yo, that's what they need to do to try to get back in this game. They need to get ward control back up and get control of their jungle again. Pirate solo pushing bottom. This is another smart move. Good split pushing. Pirate can't actually... Yeah, he's going to get that speed attack. Uh, attack speed buff. And put a lot of damage on this turret. And he's going to pick up this turret before LeBlanc can respond at all. And he doesn't really care about LeBlanc. LeBlanc can't do anything to him. He can just eat out of her shackle. And she's going to burst no damage onto him because he has a bunch of MR. So Highwind's still AFK. Uh, maybe Highwind is uh, watching the stream and casting uh, <laughs> invents or something. I have no idea. And there's the kill. Uh, Malzahar's going to pick that up. Or Kogba's going to pick up that kill. Malzahar putting the stun down, putting the pull down. Huge damage, especially at this point in the game. That pool does take a percent of dam percent damage of health if you do not know. It is very, 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 very strong. It's uh, Call of the Void. Or no, not Call of the Void. It's uh, Null Zone. Yeah, so uh, it takes 10% uh, of your health a second. 10% of your health a second. Your <laughs> of your max health, not your current health, your max health. So very, very good ability, really strong against tanky heroes. <clears throat> it does have a cap against minions, so it's not the best against, like, say, Baron. It's not going to do, like, crazy damage to Baron, but... it still do a lot of damage to Baron, but it's, it's, it's against champions. It's just so, 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 so brutal. Looks like Team Team is backing off here. Pirate still solo pushing bottom. Baron has war off now. So we're going to get back into that ward control game. Gear up for the next Baron. Highwind still is missing. Maybe he's at 1,100 gold now. Maybe, who, who knows what he's saving up for? Only Highwind can tell it. Maybe I can call him while I'm casting this and ask him what he's doing. <laughs> Oh, and they see Jaybok, and they put a lot of damage onto him. Oh, the Acid Barrage almost hits. Oh, Mazahar's going to pick him up. There's no escape here. There's the stun. There's the dot, or the silence in the dot. And he's going to go down. Trying to be sneaky, trying to steal that red. But uh, really, I mean, you know, props to him for tr uh, trying to make something happen. But not really going to help him at this point in the game. So now our cat scan, farming mid, trying to get farmed up. Looking at the farm of the game, we have two standouts right now. We have uh, Gangplank at 258 and Cogma at 238. Highwind has reconnected now, so Highwind is back in the game finally. 
but it didn't. His presence wasn't really. I mean, it was great that he was missing. This game probably would have been over by then. That's probably why this game hasn't. And there hasn't been the decisive moves that I've been talking about to finish close out this game. But we're probably gonna see it now that he's back in. Now that they have a full five, they're gonna easily pick up Dragon. The other team can't do much about this. We're looking at a, again a 10k advantage, and this is the point in the game where it just becomes uh, a system out and it becomes a numbers game. Uh, 10k, just the, the the farm advantage, the level advantage isn't quite there. The game's gone long enough. The levels are kind of still stable. Uh, Graves, I mean, running Gans, I mean, got to hand it to him. I mean, 267, 242 is pretty good at uh, 45 minutes in. 326, that's that's really solid. That's actually really, really solid. So running Gans putting in a really, really great AD performance. Here, doing his job farming and getting fed as, as, as fed as he can. Now, if they can protect him, he might be able to help out in these team fights turn around. But I think the ineffectiveness of having a Shaco, having a LeBlanc on your team, uh, having a Karma who, I mean, Karma has to actually be pretty fed to be effective too. Uh, that's kind of why I don't like her as a support as much. I mean, she can be good, but she, she kind of needs farm, which kind of takes her out of the support role in my opinion. But, you know, to each their own. I feel like those characters a little bit, and, and, you know, a Leona top. A Leona top, I don't like that either. So, I mean, really, besides the Graves, uh, the team comp just don't really like it that much. And the team comp for the team is makes sense and is tanky, has AoE damage, just a lot better team fight overall. Baron is back up now. Uh, team Mundo is the only ones with wards onto Baron. Highwind is pinging to move into their jungle. Gearing up his team, ready to fight. There's a really great ward coverage actually from Team Mundo, so I, I mean, I really like this. Uh, Soraka hasn't gotten to it yet with her oracles to ruin their day. But I do really, really like this warding. They do know Pirate is there. LeBlanc is going to get a, a rude awakening there. There's that. Look at those crits. Such huge crits. And they're. Hi, when please feast, feast the clone again. Do it. Do it. Oh. Too bad. Yeah. Rubik's easily going to back out of that, but now Rubik's out of the fight. So now Rubik can't be in this. Now Jbox went into, went into the fight. He's going to back out. He's used his all, used his clone. They've used all their tricks now. And now, uh, if team, this team to have Soraka go in there, make it destroy Vision, and they should be able to have an easy Baron now. I mean, this is as easy as it gets. The only thing that can happen is Shaco is going to deceive the wall and try to get a steal. That's all he can do. I would throw it on a Jack of the Box trap. They have Vision now, so this is all. This is one job. Can he deceive over and steal this Baron? Here we go, Jaybok, one time, one time, and he does it! Jaybok gets the steal, they do get the Baron, all the damage is going to be a huge team fight there, but I don't think Team Mundo can actually pull this out at this point, and they are going to start going down, Leona very, very tanky, but she's not going to be able to kill anybody, Jaybok with the great steal, the great steal, one time, one time, so he does get that steal, but unfortunately it is not going to be able to help them win the game, uh... And uh, if they could have, if they could, if he could have got the steal and not had his team fall up and die, it would be one thing. But at this point, they're actually going to lose an inhib for this. LeBlanc not going to be able to defend this turret. She might dive in and try to be cute. But if they're really smart, they should be able to turn on her and kill her instantly. Uh, yeah, and this, this turret should be poked down by Kogma. Kogma should be able to put it. So there she goes in, puts down her burst damage, but it doesn't matter. They should be able to try to poke this down. They're not Kogma's gun shy now. Hey, so, hey, great job by LeBlanc with that Baron buff. Throwing it down, representing, proving me wrong. Way to go, Rubik. Rubik is a very solid player. Underestimating him. Uh, unfair by me. Unfair by me. But, yeah, Jaywalk, hero hero for a minute with his, uh, <laughs> maybe five seconds with his Baron steal. That was really awesomely timed. Now, little backstory, Intel Landfest. So, Raise Your Weapon had a team at Intel Landfest. And who, look, big charge coming in here. There's going to be no sweet defense by Rubric now, and this turret's easily going to go down. But so Intel Landfest, so we had a Razor Weapon team. Highland was supposed to cast with me. I wanted a dedicated cast, so we had five other people there to represent Razor Weapon and play for our team. It was really, really good. Highland's going to go down here. Great chase. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. This could be the chance. This could be the comeback chance right here. Malzahar's going to go down and get picked off here. If they could have picked up more people, they might have been able to have a huge comeback here, but I don't think it's going to happen. They're going to try to charge down the gut. Oh, if they would have picked up maybe one or two kills there, one or two more kills there, if it was just Soraka trying to defend, they could have done a complete 180. And they're going to press this really, really hard. That's pretty much their only chance to try to get back in this game, is to press this really hard and maybe pick up an inhib. They're going to five-man push here, but they're going to have to tank the turret because there's no minions here yet. Leona's going to decide, going to sign up for this. They're going to put tons of damage on this turret. They should be able to get it. 
Uh, LeBlanc, way, oh, way too aggressive. LeBlanc, way, way too aggressive at this point in the game. They are going to pick up the turret. j is going to go down. Unfortunately, his clone not being able to sacrifice. And they do pick up the turret, so, you know, traded two kills for a turret. The other team traded two kills for a turret. So they basically come out even there, and if you come out even when you're behind at this point in the game, a pirate might get turned on, but he's he's way too tanky and he has Cogba to back him up. Rest of the team's smartly backing off, but really a trade at this point if you're behind is good for you. Trading while you're behind is good uh, because a lot of the other teams are gonna have more bonus gold, so you're gonna get more for your turn for that trade. Now they're down about 10k still, which is still really 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 bad, and and to be honest. That uh, the J Box deal did prevent the end of this game. However, the end of the game is coming. Should they get another Baron, or should they push down these inhibs? Because this middle inhib, I'm expecting a five-man push on this middle inhib. If they're all, if they're all uh, buffed up, healthed up, bought up, and they all push as a five, they should be able to take this. Now, Kogma has a Guardian Angel. Kogma so farmed up now. He is complete. So this is the point. Whenever you, whenever you fill all these items up, you buy potions and you become. Uh, <laughs> You become basically the glowing Jesus Kogma, and that's when you know that the, the AD is completely fed. Which is surprising that Graves is not actually, with his 370 creep stats, has finished his build. But uh, he's buying some pretty expensive items, so I'll give him a pass on that. Kogma, actually, I, I, I like, I kind of like this build, although I prefer to go double Phantom Dancer, actually. With double Phantom Dancer, your your crit and your attack speed reaches that just that, that critical point where essentially you use the utility of maybe having a wit's end or something or a black cleaver but you deal so much more damage so much more quickly and you basically just hold, right click someone for two seconds and they're gone that's how that's how strong it is and at this point he, he's going to do a lot of damage but it's not quite the same so the team is moving now they are going to throw you know that's the smart thing to do that is the smart thing to do. Pirate just took all those cooldowns, all that damage, all that focus. He tanked it, played the tank roll perfectly. The rest of the team collapsed on it, and now they're all scattered. They're all low or dead. Kama's going to turn in there, and Leona, as tough as she is, able to take a lot of damage with that buff. Oh, look at this. Look at this Karma Mel if she gets attacked. Ooh, ooh, she's going to get a good flash out. But this inhib's going to go down, and they should focus these Nexus turrets. Or, they, they're, or they're going to quickly focus these, these outside turrets. But I imagine we're going to see, yeah, we're going to see this outside turret go down. They're just going to close out these turrets, and they're going to close in Hibs, and they're going to close on the next turret. And they have the advantage, and they don't need a Baron buff to do it. They're far enough ahead. Karma's going down here really quickly. Or not. Leona <laughs> getting a lot of focus. She is so, so tanky. But see, that tankiness doesn't matter. It's almost like a Singe, but Singe, I almost rather have Singe in that situation earlier because he becomes stronger, more effective earlier. Now they're going for the Nexus Turrets, probably because of that before this inhib. There's Nexus number two, and there's good game. Uh, good game by Team Teemo. They're going to take this best of three series 2-0. Really well played, really good team comp, great bands, and uh, just great calls and buff control all around. So, uh, good games. This is, uh, we have a bunch more games at the Google in-house. I don't know when they're coming down. A lot of people are gone for the holidays at Google, obviously. So, uh, look for future games. If you go to our website, RazorWeapon.com, you will be able to go uh, subscribe to our YouTube. You can actually go uh, follow us on Twitch as well, and you'll get emails. Uh, if you follow us on Facebook, uh, I post every single time a game goes up. You can go watch the stream, check it out, and uh, we should have a bunch more games for you. Also, important this weekend... This weekend, December 17th, uh, Game Breaker Fan Center, uh, go to RazorWeapon.com. And you can, uh, if you go to RazorWeapon.com, you can actually get links to all our uh, social media sites. But there should be a Game Breakers link there. If you click on that, it'll take you to the Facebook events page for the tournament. And we will have amazing teams there. I mean, not like global talent, but as far as the Pacific Northwest is concerned, really, 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 really strong teams. So go check it out. If you are in the Pacific Northwest, if you are around Auburn area or want to make the drive, uh, do it if you think you have a, a good team or want to see how good you are because you will find out really quickly. <laughs> well, Mugaga is totally kick-ass. I just have to say that. So anyways... <laughs> anyways, thanks a lot for uh, for watching this game. Everyone that's, uh, stayed in and looked at this catch. cast. Uh, like us, follow us, subscribe to us on YouTube. Check out all our other games. We'll have more content for you. We'll be giving away more uh, prizes 
Uh, go to uh, twitch.com slash razorweaponmedia if you want to catch any more of our streams periodically. And again, yeah, thanks a lot. Great games. And uh, I might actually stay on for an interview with Highwind. I'll probably get him on a vent. Maybe I'll get some other people. We'll see. Hold on a second here. I'm just going to restart the stream real quickly.